Can I get to the good news, Beck? Can yeah, I get, get to, to the good news. Get to the good uh, news. In China, Starbucks, which runs 4,200 stores, has opened up 95% of them after closing them down. Because the virus, according to Starbucks, is contained. If that's true, and I don't doubt the stores are opening, that's a three-month arc because this started in China. It's a three-month arc, and then the virus has dissipated. Now, you can't believe the communist government, can't believe what they say, it's all a bunch of crap, but this is coming out of Seattle. This is coming out of the CEO there. And so when I saw that, of course, none of the press actually reports the news, so you didn't right. hear it anywhere but BillOReilly.com. I went, this is a pretty good deal. This is good. Um, and the guy is Kevin Johnson. He's on the record. So if that's true, there may be a three-month arc. And that would mean in late April, it would start to dissipate in the USA. Right. We're about 50 days behind China. Um, and so whatever, whatever is happening, if we can trust China, whatever is happening in China, we're about 50 days behind them. So what if you look, go back and look at the headlines. I haven't posted at Glenbeck.com. If you look at the headlines 50 days ago uh, in China, that's where we are. Um, and so like we're 30, just but I'm not going to quibble. See, what, yeah. I'm, what I'm concerned about is people uh, hurting themselves because they can't handle the pressure of the Me too. pandemic. Me too. And if you, I, dis- I, I talked to the suicide hotline people yesterday. Yep. Suicide hotline is up 300%. So I want to report accurately, but I also want to report things that are good. And that separates me from the national media, which yeah. is blending reporting on the pandemic with their political wish list that Trump be destroyed. So you don't get the, the truth there. You, you're getting a uh, spin negative to hurt Trump about the pandemic. Right. right. So, you know, that's my job. That's your job. I mean, I, I have to say that I consider the blaze an honest form of, uh, of communication. You're different from BillOReilly.com. I'm very hard news uh, focused on mine. Uh, I don't go off into a lot of different areas, but that's not a criticism. It's just what it is. Yeah. Fact, hundreds of thousands of people are coming into my website. It's unprecedented. Hundreds of thousands. Because they know what they're seeing, particularly on television in America, is a bunch of garbage because it's speculation. How many times have you seen an anchor go to their audience and to the guest? How many times have you heard the words, um, what do you make of this? When you hear those words, you know that anchor person, whatever, doesn't have a question. Is that smart enough to have a question? What do you make of this? What are you, nuts? Your job is to bring information and get more information. Not this bilge, word of the day, B-I-L-G-E, that we're hearing. So anyway, I, I really want to bring the best available information. I think this thing subsides by summer. I could be wrong, but I think that's what we're going to look at. I think so, too. I think it is going to I th- think, you know, April or May is when we're going to pull out of this. Uh, and it's a seasonal thing. So we'll be facing it again. Uh, but hopefully we will be more prepared uh, for it the next time. When when this lifts, we have to understand that this is like a seasonal flu. It's going to come back. So we need to prepare. We need to, you know, we're going to have to keep our distance from each other for a while. I want to take a quick break, Bill. And, and uh, when we come back, I want to talk to you specifically about the spending bill. Uh, the I think the suicide that Thomas Massey just went on a suicide mission. Uh, and um, and also, I want to talk to you a little bit about what the Fed is doing and how you feel about this far as our recovery. Right thing to do. Too much, too little. They're already talking about yet another stimulus package. We'll get to that here in just a second.
All right, I want to talk to you a little bit about Goldline. Goldman Sachs said just the other day, uh, no, it's, it's ZipRecruiter, sorry. Gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, ZipRecruiter. Uh, ZipRecruiter uh, is the best way to hire, and we're all going to have to hire again. Uh, and ho- hopefully you haven't let people go, but if you have, our businesses are going to come back, and they're going to come roaring back. And right now you're hearing the, the sound whipping through the wind, whipping through the cubicles, uh, through offices all over America. Uh, if, if you're somebody who is going to be hiring people, I want you to look at ZipRecruiter because you want to be the first in and getting all of the great people who have been let go because there's a ton of people that have been let go. When you're ready to hire new people, uh, make sure you use ZipRecruiter.com slash Beck. They send your job out to a, a hundred of the web's leading job sites. They have powerful matching technology. ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find the people with the right experience and invite them to apply for your job. Smart people are using ZipRecruiter right now and trying to find the right people because we are coming back. Find them now. ZipRecruiter. Do it for free. You can go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Beck and use the service for free this time. ZipRecruiter.com slash B-E-C-K. It's the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter.com slash Beck. 10 seconds. Station ID. So, Bill, let's talk about the stimulus package. What would you think of the stimulus package? So it's a three-month fix. Um, you know, if I were a senator, I would vote for it. I understand that it was loaded up with a lot of garbage that doesn't have anything to do with the pandemic. Um, and uh, the bill is, I don't think it's overall harmful to the nation because you needed it this time particularly because it did stabilize the stock market for a few days. But it's a three-month fix, and now we're $25 trillion in debt. So, you know, but you got to get through this before you can deal with the debt. Uh, looks like Thomas Massey may have just uh, committed political suicide. He was standing up in Congress and saying, this is unconstitutional to, we, we don't have a quorum here. And you can't just pass bills without a vote. Uh, and he wanted a he wanted a vote, and uh, you know he didn't get one. And now, I mean, how do you think he's going to fare? I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me whether he fares well or not. I in the end, and I cut through all the BS. The House will pass the bill, and uh, Trump will sign it. And then three months. Hence, we're going to be looking at another bailout unless they come up with a vaccine. That's the whole key here, is if the medical community um, can come up with medicine or vaccine to knock this thing out vis-a-vis Ebola. Um, I think they're going to be able to, and that deck will nail socialism for the next 10 years dead in this country. Because who is the target of uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, the big drug companies. Well, who's going right. to save our butts? The big the drug big companies. Drug companies, yeah. Um, um, and, you know, if you think that the federal government can save you in the medical area, well, let's see if the federal government gets, gets the uh, vaccine. They won't. It'll come out of the private sector. So, you know, it's 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 interesting because Fauci has just come out and said, if we would have had nationalized medicine, we'd be really screwed. Uh, well, you know, the stats. look at the stats in, in Italy and Spain. The deaths yeah. are a million. They're right. Seven times as high as the United States. The United States right. has the lowest deaths per million population of any country that's been impacted. And the, the, it I mean, looks that's, like Germany. That's the hard stats. And if you look at Germany, which uh, whose market I think may even be more free than ours because their CDC, if you will, doesn't have dictatorial powers. Um, they just advise and say, look, we need testing that gives us these kinds of results. And then it has to go to the free market. And their testing is off the charts. I mean, they are testing 
everybody in Germany, and that is helping them. And that's because of the free market that's mandated because of National Socialism in the 1930s. Well, I don't believe the German stats, number one, that they're putting out. I don't believe it. Um, but I have it right in front of me. Deaths in Germany from Corona, 3.4 per million. All right? In the United States, it's four per million. In Italy, it's 136 per million. That's socialized medicine. Spain, 104. Great Britain, double ours. Double ours. So um, I'm not... I was always uh, a guy who, who believed the government should oversee the medical industry, but not impose government mandates like Bernie Sanders right. wants and all that. And I think this is one of the, one of the things that will come out of the, uh, the COVID thing, is that socialism is dead. The other thing is the Second Amendment will never again be challenged, at least in our lifetime. Because people know the government can't protect you. Can't protect you. Uh, so I, I mean, about right now, Amendment look at what's happening. Look what's happening uh, to the Second Amendment, though, right now. I mean, you have states like California, uh, L.A., the, the sheriffs there shut down all gun stores. I mean, they are, they are doing everything they can to shut down uh, but the, people the are gonna rebel. Second Amendment. Don't you believe? I think Virginia, that's the one to keep your eye on in November. I think they're going to throw out all these people. Now, I don't know about California. That's pretty crazy. But Virginia, you keep your eye on that, that state in November. I agree. I agree. All right. We're going to come back with Bill O'Reilly in just a second. We're going to talk a little politics, uh, a little Joe Biden, what the Democrats strategy is, how the president is faring so so far. Uh, His press conference, it's getting too popular. It is must watch television. And that's why the media wants it shut down. You might be thinking right now, literally, um, anything in the housing market is a huge gamble and maybe even a mistake. The economy has been all over the place. People are swapping the coronavirus, whether they want to or not, and everything is a mess right now. But the good news is this, too, shall pass. Maybe sooner, maybe later. But America is going to get back on its feet again, and that means your real estate plans might be fine. You need to ask an expert. Uh, This is where real estate agents I trust come in. Even under the best circumstances, the agents I work with are at the top of their class. And when you get into a scary market like this one, you need the agents. I've been there, done that, seen this one before. Imagine the market in 2008. Market's not that way yet. I mean, right now, houses are still selling uh, and they are, are closing on them. And with the loans now being so inexpensive, the interest rate so low, this may actually work out to your advantage. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, make sure you contact realestateagentsitrust.com right now. Realestateagentsitrust.com. Glenn Beck's Arguing with Socialists is available uh, April 7th. You can pre-order now at glenbeck.com or at amazon.com. Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. It's Friday. Bill O'Reilly from BillOReilly.com is joining us now. Bill, let me uh, let me take you to the, I think, must-watch TV of the day. It's at 5 o'clock, which is, you know, uh, somebody else was very successful at that time. Um, but, uh, b- uh, but Donald Trump, I think, is hitting this out of the park with these these nightly uh, you know briefings at 5 o'clock every, every night. And what's interesting to me is uh the numbers are so huge they have to be because the media doesn't want to cover them anymore they're saying this is just campaign rally we don't think we should cut away from these they're fantastic television full of information and really shows how wrong the media is because you watch that and then you watch them report it's not the same thing 
Well, a NPR station in Seattle uh, bailed, and they're not going to cover them anymore. I understand there's a big debate in the corporations that run CNN and MSNBC about carrying them. I think you're right that this helps Donald Trump and uh, builds up his credibility. You can see that yep. in the polling. 60% feel he's doing a good job handling the virus. Yep. Um, and as I said, if he gets it under control by summer, I can't see him losing at all, no matter whether it's Biden or Cuomo. Because Cuomo, by the way, is, you know, setting himself up as the virus candidate. Um, right. So you got to assume that the television media that despises Trump, that makes all kinds of money hating him, may bail out. They, they might do it. And they'll obviously not be doing it for any other reason than to try to hurt the president. Yeah, it's amazing to me because there it, it's not just him. You have to get past his wonderful, marvelous, it's incredible. You got to get past some of the superlatives he throws in all the time. But if you listen to the information and you listen to the way he's handling this, uh, and then you listen to the experts, he, he's not really taking things on. He'll, he'll just be like, you know, Bill, why don't you answer that? Um, he's doing a, an exceptional job in my in, in in my point of view, and when you're watching it, what part of that isn't essential information that you should have every single day? What part of that? Well, the the viewer should have the option of watching it or not. Yes, that's what that's what news is. So this right. is news. Here's the president. He's talking about the virus. That's news. So you're going to yes. censor the news? Sure they would. They'd do it in a heartbeat if they felt they could get away with it. Uh, and they may do it. I, I do, I'm not as bullish on, uh, on uh, the president as you are. I think we really? should use more precise language. We don't oh, need yeah, to really yeah, yeah. hear the really great people 50 times. Right, um, I, agree, I agree. Okay. But uh, in, in the very beginning of this, I had a conversation. Um, I'm not going to tell you with whom. Uh, but it was at the highest level, and I said, this is what you got to do. Now, I'm not taking credit for it. I'm sure his advisors are telling him the same thing. Um, but by being a steady, that's the key word, influence on the nation, you can take it or leave it if you're an American. You don't have to watch it. You can watch American Bandstand. Is that still on? I don't think so, but... That's what I used to watch at five o'clock. Um, <laughs> so, Bill, anyway. you know, it, well, it's interesting. I was watching because I think Mike Pence is doing a fantastic job. But if you watch it every night, Mike Pence is is very much cut from the cloth of a of a politician, a regular politician. He's, a bureaucrat, he's been very. Right? Yeah, he's a bureaucrat. He's doing a great job. He's very, very positive. But you hear the same things from him every day. He, he keeps giving the same positive message sure. the same way every day, where what I think makes Donald Trump different is he's not prepared like that. He doesn't do that stuff. Uh, and so it's just much more of a raw kind of, yeah, look, I'm just hanging it. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm hanging out with you. Let me just tell you, got all these experts over here. I don't know. Susan, come here. You talk about that. The more he does that, the more effective I think he becomes because it, it, what I'm for the first time, I'm seeing what it must be like to work for him when he's building a very complex system you know and he's building some golf course hotels casinos and he's in a boardroom meeting i'm seeing him for the first time as a guy who assembles a rock solid team and then just shoots from the hip and respects what the people that he's assembled are saying you don't often see donald trump um in a in a light where he's really respecting the people you just think he doesn't listen to anybody, which is not true. And you're seeing that he's listening to these people, and he respects them, and they respect him. I think that's well, he important. Likes Burks. Uh, he likes that doctor. Um, Pence always reminds me of the Brill Cream guy, a little dabble, do you? The hair yeah. never moves. I love, I love the hair. 
And he looks the part, and he ran Indiana exactly what he's doing. Now, very disciplined guy. He's not going to say anything that gets him in trouble. And then Trump is the exact opposite. He's going to come out, as you said. Uh, he's going to ruminate. He's going to, well, you know, maybe we'll do this, but maybe we won't. And, and people are actually following and listening to what he says. Whereas right. if you had Pence and doing I think that, they... I, I think they understand him, though, as well. I think the people, if they're watching, understand what he's saying. And it's amazing. The people that are paid to watch him, they don't listen to him. Because when he's talking about, hey, April, this is clearly what he would like to do. And he's preparing sure, people sure. for... It's, it's all in context of... I'm right. going to try to lift the spirits of the nation. But, Beck, you know, Correct. and we've discussed this on your fine radio program, these correspondents that are sent out to cover Donald Trump each day are told yeah. what to do. They're told, oh, here's the story of the day, and this is what you need to find out. So you're absolutely right. They're not listening to what he's saying. They're trying to get in their question to diminish him. Because that's right. what they've been ordered to do. Right. So it's not like they're reporters trying to get the truth and listening to what is unfolding before them. They've got their little list. Get them here. Get so, them there. Question you, this. Question that. Do you believe, Bill, for the first time I have seen the, the news people in even a worse light uh, than I have before? Uh I'm seeing now in a national emergency, something that we're, we're facing bigger than 9-11. Uh, and we're in a national emergency and they are. It's so bad. It's almost as it's almost as if they are are they would rather see the country burn down to the ground than have this guy right in any way, shape or form. Well, certainly that is true for The New York Times, The Washington Post. AT&T, that's CNN, and Comcast, that's NBC. That is absolutely true. But even worse is the speculation. This might happen. It could happen. We need 87,000 ventilators. No, we need 64,000. We need them. Why, where were they? Why don't we have enough masks? Uh, did the guy eat a bat in Wuhan? I don't know, but he may have. But no, he could have been made. And, yet, and yet they won't. You know, and, like, the, and yet they won't. They won't even give the facts that the reason why we didn't have ventilators on hand is because Barack Obama used them in the last emergency and then failed to replace them, which he was supposed to do. So we were down like 150 ventilators, 150,000 ventilators because he put them in use and then never replaced them after the last uh, uh, you know, virus square. Right. Yeah, right. But why would you give perspective to a news story? Why, why, would, yeah, you why would you do that? Yeah, why would you do that? Yeah, the reporters don't even know that. That's all, you know, limited their frame of references. And number two, that goes against the order du jour, the order of the day. Get them on April. Get them on Easter. Get them on this. Get them on ventilators. Get them on arguing with Cuomo. Get them, get them, get them, get them, get them. And that's right, what it's so all about. So let me let me ask you this because we have, we got to we got to run. Um, you just brought up Cuomo setting himself up as the the virus candidate. Yes. Uh, I think I think Joe Biden, man, he's looking worse than he's ever looked. But he's only getting two thousand people watching him on his little <laughs> podcast thing. Anyway, it's it's really well, sad. Ought, yeah, he ought to go down and look at your podcast, and then go out, come on up and look at mine um, Oof, because we have the most bad. successful ones. But yeah, you know, poor Joe. That's, mm -hmm. that's all I can say is poor Joe. I, I want I want him on a on a respirator just so he can't talk. Right. So is there? It, it, do you think there's a chance that Cuomo comes in and he tries to make the case and and is at all successful of of hijacking mm -hmm. the convention? Because I think that's what they're hoping. Yeah, but I think Biden may get the one thousand nine hundred and eleven delegates he needs. Because Bernie Sanders is blown up completely. So on June yeah. 2nd, that's the big uh, primary that's going to put him over the top. If he gets the delegates, then Andrew's got to wait four years. Uh, but Andrew right. wants it, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. All right. Bill O'Reilly from BillOReilly.com. Thank you so much, sir. All right.